General Commander is Steven Seagal's mega blockbuster hit movie that put his name back on the map as one of Hollywood's elite. Nah, but seriously, it's f***ing terrible. And I don't care. It begins with Seagal being interrogated by his boss at the CIA and asked a simple yes or no question. Did you kill Gino Orsetti? He starts talking about his country betraying him. This country that I love so much is the real reason why I feel so betrayed. And other conspiracy theory nonsense. You're asking me questions that you will that never, you will never understand. understand. And I've done a lot of things that they will never let you know about. To her credit, she really tries to get him to focus. Did you kill Orsetti? But he's having none of it. Where we have literally two governments inside a government. Nobody would have thought 20 years ago if I would have told them what's going to happen now. I lied to about what they've done to my country. Country. We then go two weeks into the past. And at this point, you probably think whatever he was talking about will soon all make sense. When you know what I know, I know, I know. you wouldn't call it your home either. Then you have never seen a Steven Seagal movie before because his crazy old man rant has nothing to do with anything. Two governments inside a gov government. So now we're in Cambodia and Seagal's team is trying to bring down a gang that kills people for their organs to sell on the black market. She's here, red dress. Seagal clearly has no idea what the CIA does, but whatever, I guess we're going with it. We are 10 minutes into the movie, and this guy getting hit in the nuts is the smartest thing that has happened. <laughs> Anyways, the MO is for this hooker to lure men to a hotel room where they are then sedated and their organs removed. Seagal comes up with the worst plan of all time and they send one of their guys in as bait. What's up? Okay, uh, how much for, I'm gonna grow so beautiful. And just in case you don't think this is dumb enough, their eyes are somehow cameras. Zach's eye cam is live. So the hooker leaves and the bad guys come in to do their job. Seagal's team slowly make their way up to the room and are in absolutely no hurry. Their teammate would have been long dead if this guy didn't waste time rubbing iodine all over his chest. You're cutting his heart out, you f***ing idiot. Why are you worried about him getting an infection? You know what? Whatever. It brings us to why we're all here, and that's to see how terrible and lazy the action scenes are. And Seagal does not disappoint. First, he kicks the door around shin height, since that's as high as he can get his foot now. The door goes flying off its hinges and crushes this guy. Now they arrest them, right? F no, they just start executing everyone. Just blindly killing everyone in the room isn't enough. They make sure to murder the getaway driver as well. Not only does she riddle him with bullets and cause him to wreck, but she continues to rain gunfire on his dead body until the vehicle spontaneously f***ing explodes. Back in the hotel room, the bait is now a hostage because that's literally the only possible way this terrible plan could have gone. <laughs> the bad guy then realizes he's in a Steven Seagal movie and nothing has to make sense 
so he shoots his only leverage. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. It didn't. So the CIA tells them that that was the dumbest shit they have ever seen and you guys can't be a group anymore. This team is being disbanded. You will no longer work together. No longer work together. Which is actually very reasonable. They all tell her to get f You know what? You're really wasting my time. And this guy thinks he's in a completely different movie. I don't know where he is. Now, if we're gonna be much longer, I'm gonna need a burger or something, cause I'm starving. Read the room, bro. We're all emotionless tree stumps here. Then we get this bizarre scene where Seagal doesn't move the entire time. I'm pretty sure he fell asleep here and nobody noticed. Anyways, Seagal meets with a rich friend to ask for $5 million in order to start a business. I'm all ears. What business? Getting revenge on the mob boss Orsetti. So you want revenge? I know what you're thinking. That's not a business. Why would she ever agree to that? You will have the money on one condition. I become a full partner in this whole deal. Because it's a Steven Seagal movie where everybody's a f***ing idiot. I like the sound of it. We then get this insane subplot where someone high up in the CIA hires an assassin to kill Seagal. Why he does this is never explained. Seagal isn't the least bit surprised about this knows exactly who did it, and you make another f***ing move or blink the wrong way, I will kill you, I will kill your f***ing mother, I will kill your f***ing dog. Because Seagal gives everyone one free pass on trying to assassinate him. Then the guy just goes right back to sleep like this is perfectly normal and he's been through it a thousand times. This whole thing is never brought up again. So it turns out they and Orsetti have a mutual friend and they set up a meeting with him. I'll see you soon. Why the f didn't they do that in the first place? They pretend to be interested in buying a human heart and pause to lecture us on the dark web. Dark web is where anonymous buyers use cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin to buy guns, drugs, and organs, all untraceable. How are they CIA agents and don't know what the dark web is? If you think they're explaining it for the audience, that's bullshit because at no point does it ever come up. So they're meeting with our city to buy a heart. Can we get this moving, please? My husband's on his deathbed. When do we get our products? But he surprises them and the owner of the heart is still alive. Why? Is he just going to cut it out and hand it to them? What is wrong with everyone in this movie? Go ahead, do it. So they get into a shootout and our city takes her as a hostage. Take that shot! Then doesn't have her as a hostage. Then somehow she's a hostage again. Let me fucking take you, Jake. You know, typical Seagal movie stuff. It ends up in this ridiculous action scene and as they're driving away, the wannabe Nicolas Cage character shoots out the bad guy's tires with very fake looking bullets. This somehow causes it to not only go flying into the air, but also back in time and launch off this vehicle we've already seen it drive past. Twice! 
Luckily for the bad guy, he just happens to have a fake looking helicopter flying around at all times, outfitted with fully automatic weapons. Seagal's not afraid though, because he has a handgun and this movie is f***ing stupid. After thousands of rounds either missing or being stopped by a car door, one of them remembers they have a rocket launcher just sitting in the back seat, which is a perfectly normal thing to have laying around. After blowing up the helicopter, he tries to rip off Die Hard, but f***s it all up. Merry Christmas, mother f***er. Another car then explodes by being shot at, which doesn't even bother you because you're just happy this train wreck is finally over. Only it's not. The bad guy who was just running away a second ago changes his mind and now thinks he can take them all out with a knife. Even though they all have guns, Seagal is worried this movie might still be watchable. It's definitely not, so he waddles his way into a dramatic knife fight that goes just how you expect, with Orsetti unable to hit the morbidly obese man just standing in front of him. Okay, it has to be over now, right? No, f you. Remember the beginning of the movie where she was asking Seagal if he killed Orsetti? Did you kill Gino Orsetti? Two governments inside a gov government. Just forget that ever happened because now he disappeared after the idiotic knife fight and the CIA can't find him. Where is Alexander? It's happy, I just, it looks like you need a beer. Where is Jake? You don't know shit. Can I go now? Only forget that too, because they do know where he is. He's at home. Just when you think it can't get any dumber, the guy that tried to have Seagal killed earlier orders a drone strike. Missile released. And he and his wife are blown up. Again, they never tell us why. The only thing I can imagine is they shot several different endings and couldn't pick which one to use, so they just said F it, nobody's still watching this anyways, let's just go with all of them. And this money laundering scheme known as Seagal's movie career keeps on moving along.